I found myself having to really sit and wrestle with, recognizing that having that teaching, kind of being steeped in that for a long period of time, and then thinking, is that really what I believe? Do I really believe that people with disabilities are less fortunate than people without disabilities? Do I believe that that's the way that social hierarchy is intended to be? And the answer to those things being no. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hi everybody, welcome back. We are so excited to have you here. Today, we are doing something a little bit different, maybe in title, but the themes and the concepts are still the same. We are also digging into something that's a little bit more, feels more personal for me than what I normally bring to this channel, which feels funny to say because everything that I feel like I bring to this channel is very personal to me. But we are going to be talking about the, the crossover, the center of the Venn diagram between disability, employment, and deconstruction. For those of you who are unfamiliar with that term, deconstruction is a word. It's honestly not actually my favorite word or description for what happens, but it's the one that's most commonly used within religious circles when someone breaks down or deconstructs from religious theology or ideology that they have previously grown up with, subscribed to, etc. It's something that has happened a lot culturally with people that are in my age range and generation. And while this is not the intent of this video is to dive deep into my own spiritual process or practices. It's really to point out how bias can oftentimes be infiltrated or built into areas of life that maybe we hadn't previously considered. So we've talked a lot on this channel about disability bias within pop culture, within the media, and it's certainly present there, but that is not the only place in our world that disability bias exists. We've also touched on that some within the educational system, legal system, like it has many, many crossovers, but I also think that it exists in spiritual or religious circles and practices and theologies as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, starting back with my own process of becoming a business owner. We'll really say six years ago, this business has existed for just about five years, but I stepped out full time six years ago and started working for myself and started really like pushing forward in the development and the launching of Chez Jeunesse and then have been the business owner of Chez Jeunesse for a little over five years now. The process for me of becoming a business owner and specifically this business's business owner has just opened me up in many, many different ways and for many different reasons. It has put stress and pressure on me unlike any that I've ever experienced in my life before. It has caused me to really dig down deep and evaluate my own thoughts and ideas about myself, about people about the world and a big part of that is because one I'm in a leadership role and responsibility and two we have a social impact mission to our business and because of that the work that we're doing touches on so many different things and I think I knew that going into starting this business but I didn't know to the fullness of what I would experience and recognizing that I've had to really get real with myself and think through what my thoughts and ideas are on just about everything Thing <laughs> in in my life because of how that intersects with the work and the ideas that I hold for the business that I do have. All of that being said, how does that tie into deconstruction and what has some of that process looked like for me? This is just a little caveat or a little break to tell you that this is not going to be a video about me talking about what my spiritual beliefs and practices currently are, even necessarily all of the ones that I came from or was raised with. 
because my intent in any of the content that I create is never to lay blame or put down anything or anyone. It's to raise awareness, it's to bring curiosity, it's to ask questions, it's to explore ideas. So I'm approaching all of that and this content through that lens. I'll keep it brief to say I was raised in a religious environment. I still identify as having a lot of spiritual, I don't know, just being spiritual, I guess. I don't know a better way to say that. But my thoughts and process over the years and over the past five to six years especially have shifted a lot to become much more settled with myself. I feel like I've been coming back home to myself in a lot of different ways. And so I'll just I'll just kind of leave leave that there. There's a lot of other channels if you're interested in the process of deconstruction in general that will go into way more details than what I'm going to go through today. But namely I want to point out one main thing that I feel like started some of the teasing out or breaking down process for me. And that is that within a lot of at least evangelical church cultures. There is a belief and a Bible verse that gets pulled out a lot and used, which is serving or helping or loving the least of these. It took, I think, a long time for me to start to identify or recognize that it's used within Christian circles, oftentimes in support of marginalized groups and people who are oftentimes left out of society. But with in that there is a lot of bias that still depicts the person not in those marginalized groups as benevolent, as caring, as almost saint-like sometimes for caring for those who are the least of these or who have been marginalized or left out of society. So it's it's not really promoting a perspective. Again, this is a lot of this is from my own perspective, but from the soup that I've been stirred around, in, <laughs> the concept there is not really one of equality and pushing towards social justice. It's more so someone who has a lot giving or extending to someone who doesn't have a lot. In that, there can oftentimes be that pitying mindset, which I see a lot of within disability work and equity. We've talked about that a little bit before, but that is a common disability bias, that a disabled person is less fortunate than someone without a disability. And so when someone without a disability takes pity on someone with a disability to give them a job, to take care of them, etc. There's a lot of light shined back on the non-disabled person for the work they're doing instead of maybe shining a light on culture as a whole and saying, why isn't this person being given equal rights and opportunities? What do we believe about the inherent value and worth of the disabled person and how they belong in our world? So, Whatever the original context and meaning of that verse originally was, I think it gets misapplied and promotes further bias and stereotype, specifically in this example within the realm of disability. And that was something that I found myself having to really sit and wrestle with, recognizing that having that teaching kind of being steeped in that for a long period of time, and then thinking, is that really what I believe? Do I really believe that people with disabilities are less fortunate than people without disabilities? Do I believe that that's the way that social hierarchy is intended to be? And the answer to those things being no. (laughs) I don't think that someone with a disability is less fortunate. I don't think that there should be a social hierarchy. I don't think that there's one group of people that's more deserving of rights and privileges than another group of people. So if that's the case, then what is my true mindset and how do I untangle this bias that is oftentimes spoken with the best of intention? And you'll find that to be true with a lot of different biases that they're wrapped up to look really nice and pretty and shiny and oftentimes have morphed so much over time and throughout history that we believe they're nice and pretty and shiny and we're not actually evaluating where they came from and what the root is to really examine what do I believe? Is this what I believe? If it's not, what else is attached to that bias and to that theme that I need to start to separate and to to pull apart? So 
what do disability employment and deconstruction have in common? In this case, they definitely have bias. The bias that someone with a disability is less fortunate than a person without a disability, or that a person without a disability who is providing care, whether that's employment, whether that's actually caretaking, etc., is benevolent or deserving of some sort of reward or praise for the gesture or the service that they are providing. So, I don't exactly know how I want to wrap all of that up. It's hard because I'm trying to compartmentalize something that within the scope of my brain and my heart and my soul is actually like very expansive and is fairly intertwined with a lot of other things. But I guess in summary, what I would say is that it's helpful when we're starting to get curious about ourselves, the things that we believe, the things that we stand for, the bias that we have, that we don't leave any areas or facet of our life unexamined in that process. That sometimes in the places that you least expect them, you will find narratives and beliefs that are impacting and causing some sort of sway or it's a small voice in your head that's dictating choices that you may or may not actually truly believe or resonate with. So that's it for today. Thanks for being here. If you have questions, thoughts about that, please drop them below and we'll see you next week. Shayjaness teammates, your keyword for this week is Paris.